can appreciate an authentic story and especially an authentic story of of redemption of self. Mm-hmm. And I know you had that a little bit. I think we need a lot of uh, of both. We need ups. We need downs. Uh, downs help to uh, create character. And, you know, it's one of those things where if everything's just always going good, then how are you really going to appreciate? How are you going to understand? How are you going to value something if you don't know how hard it was to get there? Bingo. So, you know, I, I appreciate it. I, I am very grateful that my downs were not my final you know, moment I was able to come back from things, whether it was health or whether it was relationships or whether it was just career going in weird circles and places. And to be where I'm at now, I'm very grateful. But I know how hard it was to get here. And I appreciate the hell out of it. For sure. I know <clears throat> me and Mike relate on this a lot, but we we really get along best with people who have been through shit, you know, trauma, tragedy, survived, overcome um, and adapt. And uh, what I'm referencing, yeah, people who got their shit together are no fun, right? They're no yeah. fun, right? You, you, <laughs> really, it's, everything's it's been going great. great. It's been you. great. Good for you. Wow, oh, God. Yeah, got all your teeth and everything. <laughs> That's <Fuck>. sick. Right. <laughs> but I, I, for those of you who who, who don't know, um, the 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 thing I'm referring to is in, in 2017, you had a, a little bit of a, a mental breakdown where you realized yeah. you needed some time for yourself. Uh, and the mental breakdown was basically me going through my first real breakup in my 40s. I had never had heartache before like that. Oh, that was, oh, it was no my relationship that, that came to an end when I was on the road. And so, yeah, it's like, how am I supposed to be a functional entertainer when I, I, I can't keep my personal life together? And so it was one of those things that, you know, doing a lot of drinking, a lot of just, you know, the road. And, and you know, unfortunately, it, it, it took its toll. Would, would you say you were an alcoholic? No, no. Alcoholic is daily. Alcoholic, because I asked. I asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> Based on research, no, it's uh, it's one of those things where you Wait, every, every other day? day. No, I was on the weekends. Well, there's different there's different on levels the there's different levels of like alcoholism. There's like a hardcore physically dependent alcoholic that like wakes up in the morning, their hand they have tremors, they need to drink just to satisfy this physical dependency. Exactly. But then there's also lower levels of of alcohol dependency that are binge drinking and and that kind of thing, which technically classify as some level of of alcohol dependence. Or I asked, or they, they still get away no. from an emotion. Okay, then yes. Yeah. Then yes. no, no. I was asking. Is that? Oh, oh, yeah. No, that was yeah, that was me. Yeah, I, I try not to deal. You know, but, uh, you know, I was doing it more so on the weekends. Not really so much. Uh, I wouldn't wake up and like I need a drink or, you know, Monday, Tuesday, have a drink. It, it was more so on the weekends. Was it ever affecting your work? N- here, that's the crazy part is that um, no, because on stage I wasn't drinking. Hmm. It was after. Oh, so the problems mm-hmm. are only when you were drinking. Were you just smacking your chihuahuas? Your oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Get over here, Vinny. <laughs> you little shit. Your name's no. Laughter, but you won't be laughing for now. <laughs> Did you just finger my dog? <laughs> yeah, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Talk to him. Talk they're, to also, him. they're also uh, long beach it, it was, chihuahuas. Like, you're not going to push yeah, these motherfuckers yeah. around. Oh, like, it's me. a 562 dog. Yeah, yeah like you don't have a 562. LBC, LBC, man. No, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. And if you don't mind me asking, how Hopefully. did you how did you overcome it? Like, what was that one thing in your brain that you were like, all right, fuck it. This is what I have to do to get it done. Because I always forget to ask this important question. And right now, there's somebody in your position, exactly in your position. Like, mm-hmm. literally you. <laughs> uh, but, like, somebody's going through what you're going through. And, like, what is that one thing that you had to think about or do to get you out of that rut? Um, I knew that if, uh, you know, the fact that I was going through this breakup, I didn't want to depend on alcohol in order to numb it or to avoid it or I needed a deal. I needed a deal and I needed to make sure that I had a clear head. And so that kept me. I didn't I didn't drink for at least two years, it was oh, two years. Gosh. And I actually I wrote it down. It was two years and like three days because I, I made sure that I hit the two year mark. But I wanted to make sure that I dealt with all my bullshit sober. I re- and, I did, and I didn't want to make a bigger mess because, you know, sometimes you drink, you'll send a text you can't come back from. You make a phone call, you, mm-hmm. you regret. And I wanted to make sure, you know, it hurt. <laughs> but I dealt with everything. On a, with a clear head. What was that dealing like? Like, what did your... It sucked, dude. The, yeah, but what was, the, <laughs> what was the process? Like, you you know, you spend two years sober. Are you in therapy? Are you... Are you spend- I did I did do some therapy. I didn't want to do it at first because, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, Mexicans, man, we're, we're, we're you know, we don't, we don't do therapy. We, we'll, we'll get drunk and cry and sing songs and vent to an uncle. Hey, estás bien, mijo, estás bien. And that means you're good and you get the blessing. And so it's one of those... It's, it's hard to say you need help. It's hard to admit sure. that you have a problem that that you can't fix on your own. And so um, uh, originally the idea was to try to do couples therapy and that unfortunately was not working. But the idea of talking to someone who allowed you to question yourself and find out about yourself, because that's one of those things. No one ever asked themselves, what is it I need? What is my problem? What is my issue? What do I got to do? What brings me joy? What makes me feel good? And going to therapy is one of those things that helped you do that. 
you know, and so I did that for a couple of years and I made sure that I kept myself, you know, focused and uh, didn't drink. And I think it was very beneficial because therapy teaches you to listen, which is a hard thing to do when you're in the business of talking. <laughs> Interesting. The American's been coming out of me a lot. America. Yeah, America. I've been watching NASCAR on Sundays. I'll admit I can't get rid of the fast cars that they, they got a place in my heart. I see the clips when one of them crashes and the other driver goes up and Big starts Rex. punching through the window. Fight. It's, it's fueled. It's fiery, dude. We got a sponsor, guys. It is NASCAR. We do love NASCAR. And it might be the end of the season, but the intensity just started. This weekend, NASCAR is back at Homestead Miami Speedway. So strap in for a wild ride as stars of the NASCAR Cup Series take on Homestead Speedway. There are only eight drivers left. They're vying for their spot to be a champion. NASCAR always delivers an action-packed race full of lead changes, wild wrecks, and close finishes that will keep you on the edge of your seat for the entire race. You have to experience NASCAR in person, so be sure not to miss the action. Go to nascar.com slash tickets to get your tickets today. Can't make the race? Tune in and get ready to take a beer to the finish line with NASCAR in Miami this weekend at 2.30 p.m. ET on NBC. Meow. Thank you. <laughs> Back to the program. <laughs> Usually when you're a comedian, you're obviously dealing with some type of trauma. That's what you use comedy to get away from it. But you never really want to take care of yourself. That's why you meet comedians. I didn't know how weird comedians were until I met them backstage. <laughs> He's touching me. They're <laughs> why am I on the one? so weird. You. <laughs> Percy fingered your dog. <laughs> fingered my dog and he touched me. Hey, bro. <laughs> Chill. I'm so sorry. I just I, got so excited that you're next to me. No, for sure. They're, they're, you got you, too, actually, are artists. You're artists. And, and your outlet is, is that of, of comedy. I commend you and I admire you for hitting the nail on the head and attacking the problem sober. Mm -hmm. I wasn't strong enough to do that. You know, I know how, how, how tough heartbreak can be. And I had one in particular where I, like, I, I drank my way through the whole thing. It's thir yeah. 30 days of trying to ignore reality. Mm -hmm. I, needed, I needed to not be present, right? That was my worst nightmare. So you're much tougher than me, also much older. And with age, Thanks. obviously, <laughs> comes wisdom. I don't, I don't know how old There was a time, you know? <laughs> No, but no, but it, it, I think that might have been the benefit of of going through the breakup at that age because people can engage in highly self destructive behavior when 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 they have that heartache and yes. and they're young and they don't know where to go or or how to handle it. But I wanted to ask you because because you mentioned therapy and you also mentioned your upbringing. You know, your uncle was saying what? what the oh, it was, it was just Spanish gibberish. You know, that's usually what happens. You get drunk, you get emotional. Someone looks at you, that's the young way, which means you're fine, dude. Uh, in a weird way. So, yeah. so I, I I find this interesting because 2022, we are in a time where people, I think, I, I'd be optimistic to think that are becoming more open and honest, especially with themselves, right? Like, like man, 50 years ago, talk about depression. You Taboo. Slap back on the head, slap Taboo. on the back of the head, like, yo, suck it up, right? Mm -hmm. and, and now I think people are more willing to have that conversation about going to therapy, about speaking to someone, a friend, um, a relative, whatever it is. I grew up with the kind of suck it up and get over it. And, and because Same. of that, I became yeah. hardened. You've seen both sides. Mm -hmm. Which in your idea creates a better self? I think it's a mixture of the two because there's some people who can handle suck it up. And, and there's something in them that, all right, you know, it's a sink or swim type of thing. And, and you know, some people are, are built differently. Mm. Some people can handle it. Some people, it's all right, then I got to do what I got to do. But there's, there's part of them that still wants someone to listen. Someone, they, they still wish they had that outlet. Mm. And so I think finding that balance, you know, is, is very important. That's the word right there, yeah. balance. I've been talking about it endlessly lately. And it seems like, you know, your <clears throat> like work-life balance was probably skewed in a direction that was unhealthy because you were touring, you weren't, you were drinking, you weren't fo focused on yourself. I was go, go, go. Exactly. As a lot of us are. But I think another big thing too is like your p mental health and, and, and your happiness is not a one, si uh, a one size fits all solution. There's no, you know, answer. Like people ask me all the time, like, how did you, you know, get off drugs? How did you get your mental health back in check? Whatever. And it's like, dude, I can't give you that answer. There's a reason why people say life is a journey. It's a journey, dude. We are all, as I look around this room, there's 20 people in here. Every single person in this room is trying their best to figure it out. Mm -hmm. No one has it figured out, you know? And, and 
as someone who's struggling, you know, on the daily or like a lot of people watching the show are, that's not the kind of thing that you want to hear. You want an answer. You want somebody to be like, yo, do X, Y, and Z, and you're going to arrive at the, the finish line that you've always been dreaming of. Mm. But you know that that wasn't the case. So through those two years of work, was there a, a, any sort of applicable realization that you had, that you garnered, that you took away, that you said, okay, I can apply this and become a happier person? It was a day-to-day -day thing. Like you're saying, it's, it's not just one like, okay, here's the plan. And that's it. No, every single day was part of that success. Every single day was part of that struggle, part of that fight. But, you know, you, you got the ups, the downs. And at the end of the night, when you put your head on the pillow, how did it go today? Did we drink? Did we make a mess? How do we feel about ourselves? It's all day to day. And so when people say, all right, so what's the plan? You take it day by day. I know it sounds cliche and they always people say that, oh, it's day by day. One but day that's literally what it is. I, I one grew day up with the saying of today has its own troubles. Yeah. Don't worry about them. Mm -hmm. That's how I used to grow up. But to take it back about which is better, uh, if you scale it back, I've, I like to reflect not just on myself. I like to watch how people act so I can learn from them as well. The people that are like, uh, brush it off, get it, shut it down, bottle it, you'll notice they have troubles when they need emotion, when they need that intimate relationship, when they have that son or, or girlfriend relationship because they don't want to open up because they were trained, no, don't do that. Yeah. So when they're bothered, they're like, bottle it down, but bottling up ends up being resentment. Resentment becomes anger, and anger is like, yo, fuck this, I don't want to be here anymore. Mm. But then you see the guy that's too much on the opposite, oh, my feelings, my feelings, yeah. my feelings, now they're just, they're fucking pussies and they don't want to do <laughs> it. So it's, it's a grand skill that you really have to fucking be disciplined. And the one key thing is, what is wrong with you? Like you have to, I, I didn't grow up with a therapist. I didn't, I, I thought it would be weird. I thought if you had a therapist, you're a fucking lunatic. That's how I grew up. I was wow. like, tell that to Tony. Soprano, I would even buddy. like, if you told me you had a therapist, I genuinely <laughs> be like, bucks. <laughs> what's wrong with you? Like really? what happened? Distance. Like, well, that, well that's what, kind of what I'm saying. The, the, the stigma is disappearing from having a therapist. Like having therapists now is commendable and cool. Mm. You're willing, you're, it's getting you're, closer you're, for sure. I mean, I, especially, I think for men, especially for men, for men, and to his point, probably certain cultures, Mexican men, it seems like especially you guys it, have. It's, a, yeah. It was very much taboo, man. Like I said, if you want to get in touch with your feelings, it was always drinking. There was music playing. You're, you're around family, wow. you know, and it's just it was very much a, you know, that's a it was a cultural thing. So to to admit that you're, you know, you you having problems that you can't handle on your own. That's that's huge. Are you that's over it. are you over it now? The relationship? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm good. I'm at peace now. <laughs> I'm all right. I'm <laughs> no, the reason I'm the reason It's not over. No, <laughs> the reason I'm asking you is um bring her bring her out. No, no. no, 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 no we brought her here today. We're going to rebuild